I've been on Linux full time now for 90 days. Gaming, video editing, doing photo editing and Affinity Photo, learning Affinity Designer, using Adobe Photoshop, uh, you name it, I've been doing it. And there was a lot of people in the comments of that first video that I did that says, you're not going to do it. You're not going to make it past 30 days, which I did. And they said that you'll run back to Windows and be more appreciative of it. And I didn't. And they said that you'll never survive without Photoshop. Bitch, I got Photoshop. What you on about? Like, for real, though. And then, you know, the growth of the channel has been amazing. Almost at 30,000 subscribers. It's been awesome. During that time, I learned the Affinity Photo. Made this logo from scratch. It was awesome. Definitely one of the coolest things I've done in a very, very long time. And every part is individual. It's honestly amazing. And fully switching over to Affinity Photo for my... Uh, my thumbnails which is also great because it allows me much more freedom and I don't have to deal with the Photoshop popping up every couple of hours being like oh not legit not legit I'm just sitting there like Fuck off buddy so I don't know I made it and I'm gonna continue using Linux I'm gonna play black uh, black myth Wuhan on Linux because I can and I want to show you that by the way okay. here real quick because we did, I did get it to run. And as you can see, we went through, put everything on very high. Uh, and it didn't run very well. But this is just normal. It doesn't run very well for anybody, really. Unless you basically put the settings low and everything. So then we went through and we did more optimization. Then we were at 55 FPS. Then we went through again, we're at 65 so FPS. And I think this is where I'm gonna keep it if I can get it to run again at 65 FPS. Uh, that's all I really need. I did attempt to get frame gen working on it on Linux. Couldn't do it, I probably need a specialized version of Proton for that, but nonetheless, it ran very well, it did very well. And I can't stream it for you tonight because, well, if I try to start it up, I'll show you what happens. Uh, this is so annoying because I wanted to stream it for you guys. It's quite a fun game. I've been practicing with it over the weekend. And yeah, as you can see, anti tamper. Basically, we've been de novoed. Thanks. Useless ass DRM. Ugh. You think they would do better with that by now? Like. Come on, let us mess with settings. Let us mess with stuff. Two attempts is all I got to make it work properly. And then I couldn't use it again. I don't know what to tell you. Da Vinci's Resolve 19 works. This is still in beta 6. I'm going to have to update to the newest one here. I guess I'm going to do that in the video with you guys uh, here real quick. Let me go grab the new installer. And here because I think I'm only on beta 6 and I don't want to be on beta 6 download Linux download only and I rewrote the guide for this by the way that was Photoshop being like ah oh, no 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 you don't get to work perfectly it's 99% perfect but yeah resolve is downloading in the background it should be done pretty soon and once it is we'll get to it um I don't know what to tell you really. The only thing that really I've had issues with is Shad PS4. And I had to use my other laptop for that so that I could get you videos of Bloodborne running, which a lot of you seem to appreciate, which is nice. I did switch over to a different terminal. I find that this one's a lot better and runs a lot better. It also keeps what you were doing uh, beforehand, which is nice. I kind of find it funny. 
I do. I find it funny that people constantly ask me, are you still using Cash OS? Did you switch to Nabora? What about Fedora? Okay. Um, I don't have all my drives next to me, which is unfortunate. But pretty much, I have about 32 of these. 32. 32 drives. 32 SSDs. And I have three NVMEs in my system. One NVMe has my games on it. Another one has Nabora on it. Another one has Cache OS on it. And I have a uh, one terabyte one of these with DRAM cache that has Fedora 40 still on it. So in other words, I haven't really done anything. I haven't really gone anywhere. Okay. So I'm like going back between uh, redefining parts of myself, I guess. It's been nice. And things are just working. And since... 30 days ago, I fully upgraded my monitors, which is nice. So we're all 165 hertz. This middle monitor here, the one I'm staring at constantly, the one you're looking at is a 1440p. The one over here is HDR 1080, 165. Same with this one over here. So I got twins and I got an older brother going on. We are on Wayland. We are on the newest NVIDIA driver, by the way. So if I go uh, in here and this button we're on 560.35.03 one hell of a driver brings a lot of stability to linux brings a lot of stability to wayland it's been perfect perfect and i love every second of it a lot of people out there still putting nvidia down but there's no one trying harder to make wayland work than they are we have amd over here having drm issues vrr issues multiple other issues uh, we have a guy in the Nabora Discord who's constantly trying to report them and get them fixed constantly. And it's kind of cool what he's doing. He's also reporting NVIDIA issues and other stuff. Multi-monitor VRR has been confirmed to be found. They found the reason why it happens. So hopefully that will be in the next driver for you people who are wondering. And Gnome's been great. Honestly, I don't think I could ask for a better DE. I still won't touch KDE with a 10 foot pole. I tried 6.2. It's embarrassing how buggy it is. They say they have it on par with Plasma 5, which is not saying much because Plasma 6 was way more stable than Plasma 5. Plasma 5 is a disaster in its own right. And these are my opinions from my own personal experience. So when someone has a different experience than you, being like, KDE is stable on my machine. I didn't mention your machine. I mentioned me, my machine. Yeah, imagine that. People like to make my videos about themselves. It's hilarious. Uh, like music players. Uh, they're like, you should try this music player and this music player and this music player. Been there, done that. None of them really work as well as many people would like to let on. The only one that ever seems to work well is called Music B, by the way. And Music B runs perfectly fine now on Linux, so there's really no point of a native Linux app if it doesn't even stand up or hold up to the greatness, which is the almighty Music B. Yeah, I just did that. Because it's that good of a freaking application. Uh, DaVinci's Resolve still, still does this thing. It's annoying. So I'm going to open Terminal. And for those people who are scared of the terminal, booga 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 gonna bite you <laughs> you don't need to be scared of the terminal my friend it's just uh it's kind of silly to be scared of something that is there to put you up and help you in having a more how do i say this learned linux experience versus anything else you know what i mean so first things first we're gonna want to run one command La la la, and again, it does not exist because there, done. I have to change that because every time it just ends up different. So you, I forgot the, the studio part. So we're gonna hit next. We're gonna reinstall. Oh, you can see that. We're gonna next reinstall. Do that. Hit next. Agree to the terms of service. Start install. Password. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy this right here. And I'm going to edit and modify this in Discord because this is where we keep everything in Discord. 
And if you're wondering how to access my Discord, if you want to actually learn Linux, it's pretty simple. You look in the description below if you're already not banned. You head up to the rules because that's the first channel you're going to see. You're going to be given the user role, which gives you access to these channels right here. But you come in here, read the rules, super important. There's 20 of them for a reason. And if you're a Linux user, you click this. If you're here for emulation, you click this. If you want to be pinged for new videos, you click this button. Simple, easy. All right, so Resolve is still open. Let's quit that. And let's hit finish. So it's done, right? It is finished. And the next bit that we have to do is a single command, which moves the libraries where they need to go done and that's it and it's gonna work all right so let's open up the new resolve as you can see it has a nice fancy little intro screen now which is nice you can open up my projects and it always goes on my right monitor it's annoying but it does what it does there's a lot of people that complain that you can't minimize this window i don't think you understand anything about the keyboard if you have a shift and a windows key and you have the arrow button you can make it go to any monitor that you want just like that i always suggest having a multi-monitor experience because it's important as for minimizing it well yeah you can't because it doesn't have a minimize maximize or anything else type of button it never did not on linux and i don't know why they haven't implemented it yet but they didn't so I find that I focus a lot more when I can't make the window go away. It's, uh, it actually is really nice. But audio works and everything else. As you go instead of one. Oh, wrong headphones. I mean, you guys heard that, but I didn't hear that. So there you go. I got my studio headphones on. And maybe... So, yeah. And then, of course, we can deliver out into AV1 MKV with NVIDIA. And the last video I did was uh, 4K, so that's why we have that. So, flawless DaVinci's Resolve experience. All I did was remove a couple libraries, install the damn thing, and that was it. I don't get why people are having such trouble with it. If there's no trouble at all. As long as you have the required dependencies, you're good to go. Again, if you need help with that, jump in my Discord. I already told you how to get there and what to do when you get in. It's not a problem. So, we had an admin problem. And I don't really like talking about this, but he was a friend of mine for a very, very long time. And he started acting up and belittling people and putting them down and becoming the thing that he hated the most. So, I had to remove him as an admin. I gave him a support role hoping that he would understand why it happened and I still allowed him access to the admin channel in my Discord. It wasn't enough for him. He went off on a tangent, threw a fit, and left. Which is sad. And then he unfriended me and he's just been gone ever since. Claiming there will be fallout to my decisions. The fallout to my decisions were another friend of mine who was a modder and a cheap maker, uh, got me a 9950X because I couldn't do it myself. Karma seems to be in my favor in this one, and I appreciate him more than he'll ever understand. He's been an amazing person to talk to, a great friend, and one of the most stubborn people that I've ever met. And you've used a lot of his work in my Discord. If you ever messed with emulation and mods and stuff, He's been one of the greatest help to Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and he has work coming for that, so I appreciate you. And then another friend of mine who's been in my life for so long that I consider him the brother that I should have had. Sorry, buddy. Brian, if you're watching this, you just, you're not around. And we weren't really that close. It happens. We make our own family in the end. And he got me the Black Wuhan game. And it was super nice of him because honestly, I really needed that. I wanted to stream that for you guys. I can't do that because of DRM now, but we know how it runs at least. We know it runs on Linux and that's all that matters. Now, uh, today, it's nice. I got McDonald's. I didn't even ask. There it was. So nice of that to happen. 
it's just been nothing but good things happening lately and i'm very happy my discord's more active uh we hit 29,000 subscribers over the weekend it's just been good things after good things happening and i'm glad about that but it hurts nonetheless to lose a friend to lose a person that i was really close with and it put me in a really bad mood for the whole weekend and i hated it and i knew i had to climb out of it on monday no matter what because i had stuff to do but it didn't matter i couldn't get that stuff done anyway because it just kept eating at me and i hate it but people were scared they were to chat in the discord at all in fears of being yelled at for asking a question like i made a post about it and i'm trying to find out where it originally came from uh it was god damn it i was at the point one second i was at the point of leaving you uh, leaving you some comments on your YouTube. You've always praised what a great community you have. I had three questions, I think, on the server. Two of them were answered by him, and I really thought he was just another toxic community. I don't want a toxic community. I hate the fact that that was even a thing that was brought up. And he knew the rules. The rules, these rules, are not just for users, Linux users, anyone. They're for us, the admins. They're for everybody. He was the reason I never bothered to ask a question. I struggled, but could find my answers, but still super annoying. And, you know, it's just one thing after the next. And when I had to make that community update, it really felt, it hurt. It did, but everybody pretty much understood so that choice was made is unfortunate to make but it's a part of life people come and go even if you don't want them to now I've fully switched over to affinity apps it's kind of cool I don't know what else to say in this video but I'm sticking with Linux Windows can kiss my ass Windows can bury it so, so, so far in hell that it never springs back up. Microsoft is so stupid that they are bringing back Recall one more time to insiders to test it, to try it, and see if they can make it work. And I don't think people understand this, but when Microsoft, some, Microsoft says there's something that is opt-in and opt-out, they really mean that, don't worry, it's opt-in. And it will probably be recording your data in a folder that you don't know about. I'll probably be looking into this when it hits through a VM. But as far as I'm concerned, I went back to Windows just to test it out for that Bloodborne video. And it was the buggiest goddamn mess that I have experienced in a long time. Explorer would crash. There'd be multiple different issues. Uh, memory usage was fine, at least, because I was on IoT Enterprise version which I own now, thankfully. Not that I'll really need it. It just wasn't worth a damn. And I tried Black Wuhong on it. Performance was a little bit worse than what you saw on Windows, which was kind of funny, but at least on Windows, you can use frame gen to make it better, uh, which is bullshit because it's not actual frame. Like you don't actually get real frames done. It doesn't feel smoother. It just feels like AI is doing something weird to your anime and calling it a day. Thanks, Monkey Gohan. Or Goku. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if someone's going to make a Goku mod for this. Since, you know... That's a thing. There's correlations between the two. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not giving up on Linux. I'm not going back to Windows. There's just no point. I have better performance on Linux. And I'm going to have even better performance once I get this 9950X in my system and everything's set up and running. So I know a lot of other people have fully switched to Linux because of me. To those people, I appreciate you and I hope your journey is going well. Remember, Discord's here if you need any questions answered or anything else. And I'll see you guys in the next video. 90 days, 93 days.
Not bad, huh? Let's see what happens in a year. <laughs>